If you need to know how the D.C. smear machine works, look no further than the case of California Congressman Dana Rohrabacher. He thinks the U.S. may have more to gain under certain circumstances by cooperating with Russia than by fighting with them. That view may sound familiar since Barack Obama held it just a few years ago, but things have changed dramatically in Washington. Last week, the New York Times targeted Rohrabacher, printing leaks from unnamed officials who said Rohrabacher was warned in 2012 that Russian intelligence was trying to recruit him. Now the left is treating him like a Russian spy. Keep in mind there's no evidence he did anything wrong. Congressman Dana Rohrabacher of Orange County joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks for coming on. Hey, Tucker. Good to be with you. So are you now or have you ever been a spy for the Russian government? Uh, no, nor have I ever received any financial uh, support uh, from the Russian government or Russian people, period. That's all baloney. So the essence of this story is that Russian agents who were not named, according to officials who were not named, were discussing ways to recruit you. Do you think that's true? That's basically the essence of the story. I, uh, I had met a... Uh, uh, I'm, listen, I'm the chairman now of the uh, uh, committee, the subcommittee in Congress that oversees our relations with Europe, Russia, and Central Asia. Yeah. And I had been on a congressional delegation to Russia. I'd met a uh, member of the uh, state the equivalent of the Russian State Department there. He was later transferred to Washington and uh, went out of his way to uh, remake our acquaintance. Now, that's what the FBI was warning me about, that he might be, in a, that he was an intelligence officer. Well, I treat anybody from the Russian embassy, or frankly, any embassy, when I don't know the person, I treat them as an intelligence officer. That's the rational thing to do. So, I mean, the implication of the story, though, is that you were doing something wrong. Now, I guess the obvious question is, that was five years ago. Why did it come out now? Well, this is basically what, we, what we're experiencing, uh, something with no substance in it, who's, who's being, and it's being stated in a very sinister way to leave people with the idea that I have done something or President Trump has done something wrong. Uh, and, and we in some way have done something that isn't beneficial for the United States, but is in some way beneficial to Russia. By the way, at the same time, the people are leaving that sinister idea, they don't even mention Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation raising millions of dollars from oligarchs in Russia. Uh, at the same time, are, are they're selling away America's uranium to those oligarchs. Right. No, this is, this is if you look up McCarthyism, this is exactly what it looks like. This is the definition of it. Um, do you think the United States, though, as a policy matter, has something to gain from cooperating with Russia under certain circumstances? Well, that's where I'm actually, uh, you know, I am a, a lone voice, except for the Ms. President Trump has the same inclination, and that is we've got to prioritize who our enemy is. In World War II, our enemy was uh, Adolf Hitler and the Japanese militarists, and we needed Joe Stalin, and we right. worked with him. Well, our primary enemy is no longer the Soviet Union. The Cold War is over, and I fought the Cold War, as you are I remember. well aware, and was a player. I was Reagan's staffer, but I did a lot of things in the Cold War to defeat the Soviet Union. But the Soviet Union doesn't exist. Our priority enemy now has to be radical Islamic terrorists. If there's a nuclear bomb that goes off in one of our cities, it's, that's, that will be the enemy. We need to cooperate with Russia. They're being murdered, just, just like the rest of our allies, to defeat the primary enemy. I get a lot of guff about that because there's this unrelenting hostility towards Russia uh, that would, uh, yeah, they're not, they're, it's an imperfect government there. They are not as, as good a democracy as our Western European allies, but they should be helping us defeat radical Islam. So uh, finally, is this having real world consequences? I mean, McCarthyism by its nature hurts people, makes it harder for them to do the jobs they do. Has this affected your life? I know you're running for re-election. This is an issue in your campaign? Oh, it has. Oh, it's, uh, well, you have uh, some multimillionaires who are running against me now who will probably put out, and I already have been putting out, uh, these hit pieces that are aimed trying to convince people that I've been engaged in some type of 
uh, illegal act or something. It's the same thing they're doing with Trump. I mean, let's face it. You got all of these sinister implications uh, when there's nothing there. There. I mean, we've been. I've been looking for uh, proof that the Russians had something to do with hacking into the uh, uh, DNC uh, 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 emails, but it's not there. After you hear these uh, these people testify, well, Trump is being castigated now, and this yeah, is got an it. attempt. Uh, boy, and I'm in the same boat with him. But you know what? Trump is doing a good job. He's over there expanding America's uh, influence among people who, to, who thought we were pushovers for the last eight years, and they, both on the, the terrorist side, but right. also on our allied side. So I'm, uh, I'm proud to be backing up President Trump in these, these efforts. Congressman Dana Rohrabacher, who, by the way, when it actually mattered, was on the right side of the fight against Russia. Thank you for that. That's right. Thank you.